everybody, and thanks for coming back and joining me at my mini art talks. Today, I'm going to talk to you about Netscape, the magical miniature world of Netscape. Now, these are beautiful, tiny carved figures that originated in 17th century Japan during the Edo period, when Japan was closed off to the West. And what they are, they were functional. They are toggles that attach to pouches on traditional, on the obis of traditional kimonos. Uh, back in those days, men's kimonos did not have pockets. Women's had, women's had very large sleeves or women could carry things, but um, men needed these small pouches and the netsuke uh, served as anchors to secure these pouches to the cloth with a cord. Now, here are some uh, very interesting varieties of netsuke from the Fitzwilliam Museum at the University of Cambridge in England. And once Japan opened up to trade with the rest of the world in about 1853-54, Japanese dress slowly became more westernized and traditional. And uh, the kimono and the use of netsuke were not as necessary as they were in the past. So these little figures became more decorative and more as uh, collector's items and Western visitors showed a tremendous interest in them. Uh, they were so beautiful and so unusual for what they these uh, tourists were used to. Uh, so consequently, thousands were kind of churned out uh, for souvenirs. Now, I first heard about Netsuke because I read this wonderful book by Edmund Duval. This is a picture of him called The Hair with Amber Eyes. And this is a story of his family. It's kind of a memoir. Um, and it, it goes back many generations from 1871 to 2009. And the common thread that runs through these five generations is this very precious collection of 264 Netsuke. And they were just, they were passed down. And that's kind of the framing device of this uh, memoir. And I highly recommend it. It's really wonderful. And here are some uh, Netsuke from the collection of uh, Edmund Duval uh, that still exists today. Now Netsuke were initially uh, worn by the warrior class. So they were therefore became quite a symbol of uh, status. And they were made from many different different um, uh, things, uh, simple pieces of wood or shell. But over time, they kind of morphed into intricate and very wonderfully carved and elaborate miniature sculptures. And they're so small, they can easily fit in your hand. Um, most of them only stand about three to five centimeters tall. And there are many, many, many varieties of Netsuke. They were carved into the shape of people, of animals, of plants, even abstract images and imaginative forms uh, depicting anything from fairy tales maybe to daily life. Um, but the colors generally are muted or most often very earthy and natural tones as you see here, such as white and cream and brown. And the materials that they were made of were equally as varied, uh, lots of wood and shells, as I uh, mentioned before, but then hippopotamus teeth and other forms of ivory and horns and even clay were used to make netsuke. So here are two that were made from wood. On the left, you have these two skeletons, a little bit eerie, a little bit spooky and ominous. Uh, they're from the 19th century and they're in the Science Museum in London. And then the one on the right is uh, equally as uh, kind of, uh, this one's a little bit more whimsical. I think it's called Hokusho and it's a netsuke of a mythical creature. And it's from the Edo period and it's in the British Museum uh, in London. Now here are two that are made from ivory. Um, the one on the left, this is called the world's first one man band with eight arms. And we don't know who the artist was. It's really quite uh, interesting. And um, it's uh, called uh, Katabori Netsuke and it's from the mid 19th century and it's in a private collection. And the one on the right, this one I really like a lot. This is a Netsuke monkey carrying a large mushroom. And it's also from the 19th century, from the Edo period. And it's in the Galleria Zaka in Vienna, Austria. Now this one is also made of ivory. This is called Hakusozu. And it's the fox who has changed into a priest. <coughs> also from the 19th century. And this is owned uh, by a European auction house. 
and I found it on their website. I don't know if it was auctioned off and, or how much uh, it, it uh, was able to bring in. Now this, I, the next ivory Netsuke is one of a kind of an, an erotic nature. This is it's called Erotic Netsuke from the Taisho period. And it's uh, owned by an uh, antique dealer in uh, France called Proantic. Now cats were considered very good luck charms in uh, Japan. And very often Netsuke were talismans or good luck charms. So here you have one of a cat. This one is from the Meiji period and it's unglazed pottery. And it's actually at the Met, at the Metropolitan Museum of Art, although I've never uh, seen it there, but I've never really gone to look for it. So I'm gonna have to now. Now the Newark Museum of Art, which is even closer to my house than the Met, it has a wonderful collection of ivory netsuke and they picked depict some of the Dutch and um, Chinese quote unquote foreigners who were allowed to trade with the Japanese during this time of the national seclusion or sakoku as it's called in uh, Japanese. Now, you see here on the right, one Chinese man has a straight beard and holds a flat kind of gourd shaped fan. And then on the left, you have two Dutch men with a curly hair and they, they've been out hunting. They're carrying rabbits on a stick. And um, these are all from the late 18th century. Now, some of these may actually have been a car from firsthand observations because there's so much detail if you, if you see here. So we don't know if he, the, the uh, anonymous carver actually got somebody to pose for him or not. Now, Netsuke are still made today. This is a contemporary Netsuke, Netsuke carver called Ruyushi Komada. And uh, you can see the tools of his trade there on the left, and then the little Netsuke that he's created above his picture. And then this is another Netsuke maker. Her name is Asuka Kajiura, and she is there with her teacher in the back, Tadamina Nakagawa, and he's behind her there. And this is their workshop. Uh, and it's a, the photograph is from 2019. Now, Netsuke has also been part of our popular culture. Now, I don't watch this show, but this is called Bob's Burgers. I'm sure many of you have seen it. And uh, season nine, episode 12, the Helen Hunt episode uh, uh, was all about a, a missing net piece of Netsuke, as you can see here in the picture. And I found part of the script. It says, wait, Larry was hiding stuff, why? I don't know, but apparently Larry liked to hide stuff in vents and chimneys. What did Helen think Larry hid? A little Japanese car figurine. It's called a Netsuki. Netsuki? Yeah, Netsuki. I believe it's pronounced Netscape. This is supposed to be a joke. This one's a carving of two snails intertwined on their honeymoon, maybe? Wow, that's beautiful. Now, I have to confess, even though he mispronounces it as Netsuki and then even Netscape, I have to confess that when I was training my mind to say Netsuke instead of Netsuki, I thought of Netscape, but just left off the last uh, little syllable there. So, so the writers and I both had the same idea. Now, this is just from 10 days ago, the New York Times crossword puzzle from January 9th, 2021. And it's a Saturday puzzle and it's the hardest puzzle of the week. And it always takes me a very long time to, to, um, to do the Saturday puzzle. And sometimes I even have to have my husband come and help me. But this time on 19 across, I knew this answer right away, accessory that might have a Netsuke attached. And the answer of course was Obi. So um, I wanna thank you. Uh, oh, and so here's your picture again, just to remind you about the um, uh, Netsuke attaching, being the toggle that attaches to the Obi. So I wanna thank you very much for coming on this little Netsuke journey with me. I hope you are were as charmed by these little miniature marvels as I am, and that you'll come back for another mini art talk. And just to remind you, if you are on Facebook, I have an art talks page there. This is not my personal page. This is just all about uh, art. And if you just go to that search bar in Facebook and put Janet Mandel art talks, you'll come to it. And then uh, you'll be on my art talks page. Also, you may be right now um, watching this on YouTube. I do have that YouTube channel. And of course, if you do watch me on YouTube, I hope that you'll hit that red button and subscribe and then hit the bell afterwards so that you'll get an email notification of when I upload a new one. 
And then I'm on Instagram, Art Talks with Janet. And I do also have a web page. You don't have to memorize this long URL. Just put Janet Mandel Art Talks in Google and it should come up. And then um, on the uh, schedule button there, either uh, if you're watch, do, watching on a computer or even on your phone, there's a schedule button. If you tap on that, it'll tell you uh, the schedule of my longer form art talks that I'm doing at local um, libraries and adult schools and things like that. But uh, because they're on Zoom right now, um, they're available to, to anyone, which is quite, quite wonderful. So please check the schedule. Um, button of my Art Talks page. And thank you so much for coming. And I hope you come back again and join me for another session of Art Talks. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. Stay safe, everybody. Please wear your masks and socially distance. Bye-bye. <laughs>